said that the religious leaders in Ezekiel's day were profaning holy things, putting no difference between the clean and the unclean, between profane and holy things, and showing no difference between the clean and the unclean. We need to put difference between what is holy and that which is unholy. What specifically did he have in mind? Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. I am profane among them. Ezekiel 22, 26. What did God say about attempts to change his law or word in any way? Bible says, He shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall he diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you. All God requires of us is simple obedience. Simple obedience. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And thou not, and add thou not unto this, his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a lie. And no liar is going to go to heaven. Heaven and earth will sooner pass away than one tittle of the law to fail. Why? Because it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to tittle of the law to fail. Popular churches are embarrassed. When we ask the papacy, how could you change God's holy law? They are embarrassed. And the reason why they are embarrassed is because they have no biblical clue. They can't find the reason from the, word of, from the Bible. But their response is even more embarrassing to the Protestants. For you will tell me Saturday was Jewish Sabbath. But that the Christian Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. Change? But why whom? By whom? Who has authority to change and expand? Express commandments of Almighty God. When God has spoke and said, Thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath day. Well, how God protect his holy day? I'm going to show you. Sunday is they call Mother's Day and Father's Day. That's what they said. This was instituted. Not, by the, not, by the, not from the word of God. So. Then Monday. We have Labor Day. We have President's Day. We have all kind of day, holiday. We have Martin Luther King. Birthday. Tuesday. There is voting. Wednesday, you have Ash Wednesday. Thursday, you have Thanksgiving. Friday is the Muslim holiday. And let me tell you why they do choose Friday as a holiday. When Muhammad, in 622 BC AD, established the Muslims, he want to find a day. So he went to Saturday. The Jews have already have it. He went to Sunday. The Christian era was at that time have it. So he chose Friday. But, and then also Friday, they call it the so-called Good Friday. No Friday is good. On Saturday, God protected his Sabbath day. Amen. And 
years so there is no holiday established on the Sabbath. Unless we find some days Christmas Day fall on it. But no holiday, no special day has been established for the Sabbath. So God protected his Sabbath from the world. And sometimes us as believers, Seventh-day Adventists, violated it. Preaching the truth. So, how the mark is received. Where is the beast mark place and people? The Bible says, and he calls it all both small and great. Rich and poor. Free and bond. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. In other words, the forehead is the seat of decision. This is where you make all your decisions. This is where you decide for or against. And when you decide against, the hand is what you use to work to violate God's law. So that's where you re receive it in your hand and in your forehead. So it's not that something going to be stamped on your forehead, but in the mind the papacy claim, claims that it changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. And that Sunday, our Sunday keeping, it's its mark of authority and power. God's mark or sign of power is Sabbath and Sabbath keeping. And the, and the beast's sign or mark of power is Sunday and Sunday keeping. Which of these marks do you decide to have? You de desire to have? Is it the mark of the beast? Or the, or the seal of God? Therefore, God does not have a mark. He has a seal. Are you with me? God has a seal, but the beast have a mark. So, do people now observe Sunday as a holy day have the mark of the beast? The answer is no. No, you don't have it. Not yet. And that no man might buy or sell, and that's or sell, save he that had the mark, are the name of the beast, are the number of his name. It's going to come a time when you're going to be forced to either stand up for God or are you going to receive its mark? And I, and I pray and hope that we start standing up for God now. Because when the time comes and the boss said to you, if you don't work tomorrow, Saturday, you don't have a job Monday morning. It's going to come to that. If you don't come tomorrow, you can, don't come back. So you have to decide. Because in your mind, there is a car note to pay. There's this daughter to send that you have in college. There's a mortgage to pay. So you're going to think, how am I going to survive? But you always remember, the Lord will always provide for his people. If you stand up for him, he will stand up for you, my friends. And you have to remember, it is those who have the privileges to buy and sell, will receive the plagues. Amen? So, in these last days, God has commanded his angels to hold back the winds of strife from the earth until something happens to his people. What is that something? The Bible tells us, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind shall not blow on the earth, or on the sea, nor on any trees. And that is that the winds shall not blow. It means to avoid strife. God is holding back the strife. And that is why we will never experience a World War III. And I can stand on the authority of God's word. It will never happen. So Putin 
can do all what he wants to do. Kim Jong-un can do all what he wants to do. There will never be a World War III. And I said it based upon the authority of God's word. Because what the Lord is doing, he's holding back those tribes. That those who are, have one foot in and one foot out can eventually make up their mind. Those who are in the valley of indecision can make a decision for God. So that you can receive his seal in your mind. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given. To hurt, to hurt the earth, not the earth and the sea. Hurt not the earth and the sea. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of he heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. So therefore, the trees here symbolizes God's people. Because Isaiah says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. The trees here symbolizes God's people. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In other words, we have sea and we have earth. Sea means a populated area, and the earth symbolizes underpopulated area. But the angels are holding back the wind of strife. Who will receive God's wrath in the last days? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire, and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The test of loyalty. How does God decide who it is we serve? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And I hope you obey the servants of God, the servant God, and become his servant to obedience unto righteousness. How does God count me if I am neutral? See this fellow here? He's not, the angel of God is trying to encourage him on his side. While the devil and his angels on the other side. There was a story about a man. He said, I'm sitting on this fence. I'm not going to go on God's side. I'm not going to go on the devil's side. You know what the devil says? Let him stay there because I own the fence. <laughs> there is no neutrality. It's either you be on God's side or on the Lord's side. The Lord will not accept 50% of you. While the devil will accept 50% because he knows the other 50. Because the Lord does not want it, he will get it. That's how he is. He doesn't care about you keeping all 10 commandments. All he wants you to do is to break one. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth aboard. According to Revelation chapter 13, John saw another beast rise up out of the earth about the time that the beast of verse 1 went into captivity. The Bible says, He that leadeth 
into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Now, in 1798, or during the time of the French Revolution, Pope Pius VI did not support the emperor. And so because of that, he sent his brother, Berthier, and arrested the pope. And took him to France. And he died in exile. So the Bible said, I beheld and saw another beast. Because it, during, it is that time that the, the, that the Catholic Church got its wound. And it was that time that the head was wounded. It was inactive. The Bible just give us some description. Because it was inactive and it had no power. It means that it was wounded, but it was not dead. It was still wounded, but still alive. And in Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And it had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Who do you think this beast represents? During, it was at that time when the land beast, the sea beast, was being put down, then we have the land beast coming up. And that land beast is none other than the United States of America. He has two horns, and he spake as a dragon. And these two horns is relig religion and politics. Religion and politics. And look what is going on in the house right now. Watch what is going on. What is going on right now? There's a section there that claim that they're religious. They're a part of the Southern Baptists. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. In 2016, Donald Trump got 72% of the evangelical votes. In 2020, he got about 85 so a lot of the evangel claim to be evangelical are our leaders in the House and Senate. So the beast, the lamb-like beast has its two horns. But soon and very soon, it will speak. It will speak. So what two tragic things does this second beast cause people to do? So listen, worship the first beast and to receive a mark in their hand or forehead. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship before the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their hand or in their forehead. How will the second beast Convince people that they should listen to him. Bible says, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Talking about that, if you remember quite well, the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us that when they were up in the, the, um, in the upper room, the Holy Spirit descend upon them like fire, the clothes of fire. And it was there that they received the Holy Ghost and they were all able to go out and preach. And that day, the Bible says that over 3,000 souls was, say, was added to the church. So, in this instance that they make it fire come down from heaven. It's not a literal fire. But the false prophets. 
Protestantism, apostate Protestantism, will try to use the Holy Spirit as a means of convincing you. In other words, for example, they will tell you that tonight they're going to be healing and people will come out from all walks of life, come with walking stick and they will take that stick and throw it away. They come with wheelchairs and get up out because what happened? They are trying to use the Holy Spirit as a means. But the Bible says that to the law and to the testimonies. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Let's not get carried away by the antics. To whom will this second beast make an image? And deceive it them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which they had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon here symbolizes civil authority. The beast represents the religious power. So we have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet represents apostate Protestantism. These are the three factors. So the Bible says that, listen, this beast that comes up in Revelation, notice what happened. In Daniel chapter 2, also Daniel chapter 7, there was a symbol there. In Daniel chapter 7, we had four beasts. We had a lion, had a bear, had a leopard, and also a nondescript beast. And so that nondescript beast represents the, the beast that is in Revelation chapter two, 13. But look what happened now. The beast that is in Revelation chapter 13 has some characteristics from the beast, the, the other three beasts, that is in Daniel chapter 7. So he has a part of a lion, a part of a bear, and a part of a leopard. So now look at, look at these kingdoms now. So these are not just the, 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 li the, the actual lion. But he's saying that there are some characteristics of these other three beasts that will be found in this beast of Revelation chapter 13. So what are the characteristics? Babylon. What do Babylon consist of? Babylon, they are superstitious and idolatries. Then when we come to Media and Persia, Mede and Persia Mede is notice for commerce, business and commerce. It was the Medes and the Persians who established the postal system. Go to history. So business and commerce. And then when we come to Greece, Greece is philosophy and sports. So now, these are the characteristics that is found. Even today, we have business, Wall Street, sports, philosophy, and sports. It was Greece who, who, who established the, the, the sports Olympics. They institute, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you who. It was Alexander the Great who established the Olympics, and he named it after his mother. His mother's name was Olympia. So he called it Olympics because he loved his mother dearly. So he names the sport 
after his mother. Then when we come now, we come now to this one have seven heads and ten horns. Symbolizing the ten Roman Empire. And I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. When was this deadly wound healed? When was the deadly wound healed? So, we find in 538 AD, the, the power or the papacy was established. In 1798, he got this wound. But in 1929, Benedicto Mussolini gave the Catholic Church. Everyone thought that Catholicism was dead. But in 1929, the deadly wound was healed by Benedicto Mussolini. Gave the Catholic Church back all the authority and the power. Go to your history. God's people lovingly obeyed. What the disciples say about whether we should obey God or men? The Bible says that then Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. I'll tell you why Peter has to come to this conclusion. You see, Peter was the one who denied Christ. Peter denied Christ. So when Christ died and the disciples began to preach Christ, it was an offense to the Jews. So they came to Peter, know that he had de 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 uh, denied him already, and him. No. Remember, when he denied Christ, he was not threatened. But no, they threatened him, say, listen, if you don't stop. But you see what happened? Peter denied Christ when he was not converted. But now that he is converted, Peter tell them that we ought to obey God rather than because they thought that Peter would just pick up lock shop and go. Peter stood up to them that we ought to obey God rather than men. And we have to reach that point, brethren. What can I do to make certain I will not receive the mark of the beast? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I said, Amen. God's last warning message to us. God's last message to the world in found in Revelation chapter 14. 6 to 12 includes worship the creator. Avoid receiving the mark of the beast. It is now clear to you that a person who received the mark of the beast is lost. Are they lost because they receive a mark? Or are they lost because they are rebellious, refuse to change and accept God, Jesus' offer? Because they refuse. They are rebellious. And the Bible says rebellion is worse than witchcraft. They are rebellious, refuse to change. And so, you have to understand that despite the fact this, is your, this was your grandmother religion, the truth did not come to the, your grandmother as how it's coming to you. So God will not hold your grandmother responsible as how he's going to hold you. Because she was ignorant of the truth. And she loved the Lord dearly according to the knowledge that she knew. It never come to her, but it comes to you. Now, therefore, you're whole responsible. When you decide to accept Jesus and fully follow him, what happens? Bible tells us, come unto me all ye that labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Friends, Jesus is waiting at the door of your heart for your answer. Re Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Will you decide now to receive his glorious son as evidence that you accept him as your blessed redeemer? Those who are online, I'm inviting you to accept him as your blessed redeemer. One songwriter said, redeem who I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. If you are not his child already, you can be his child tonight. Don't delay. Accept this invitation that I'm giving to you freely. Amen. So may God continue to bless us as we go on. As we Continue the, our series. Tomorrow, on Friday night, there will be no meeting tomorrow night. But I'd love to meet you out here again. I want this crowd to come back and bring some more with you tonight. Friday night. On Friday night, we're going to be doing Mystic Babylon, the great harlot. You can't miss that. And now you, you notice that we have been starting on time because we want to send you home early. Amen? Amen. So may God bless you. May God keep you. And our series ends on Sabbath. Amen? On Sabbath, we're going to be having the seven last plagues. Right. Who will receive it? Or are they falling now? Is the seven last plague a part of the COVID? Or AIDS? The Bible will tell us. Right. Don't miss it. Stay tuned. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Indeed, we have been edified and refreshed and repolized. Amen? Praise the Lord for one more time. Shall we all sing our theme song as we depart? And don't forget to be back here on Friday. Tell someone, share the link as well. Trim your lambs in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand together. Let every lamb be burning bright, the dark is always snaring, the dark is all of look the night before the Lord's appearing. Then a trim your lambs, my brethren dear, then a trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming, draw it now, let every lamb be burning. So trim your lambs, my brethren dear, then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming, draw it now, let every lamb be burning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for thy word. We thank you for using thy man servant one more time again to present us thy message. Be with us now as we depart to our homes. Bless us and bring us Friday night one more time to listen to your word and to understand you as you want us to guide us now, we pray in your holy name. Amen and amen. So trim your lambs, my brethren dead. Then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming. Draw it there. Let every lamb be burned.